All right, thanks for watching. And as promised, today I will give you a specific example of a function for which we can calculate the Lebesgue integral, just to illustrate how the process of Lebesgue integration works. And this is what's called the Cantor ternary function or the devil staircase function. And you'll see it has nice properties, very non-intuitive, but this is not why we're here today. We're talking about the integral of this case. So if you know Cantor stuff, okay, it has to do with splitting up the interval 0, 1 into three pieces. So let's define f as follows. f on the Cantor set Set. And if you don't know what the Cantor set is, don't worry about it. I'll give you an explicit definition as follows. Okay, so f of x equals to the following. If you take the interval 0, 1 and chop it into three pieces, you get 0, 1 third, 2 thirds, 1. On the middle piece, define f to be 1 half. Something like that. So this is one half. So it's one half. On the first tanto set, okay, so on one third, two thirds. And then continue. On the first, on the interval zero, comma, one third, divide it up into three pieces. So we get one ninth, two ninths. And here, on the middle piece, define f to be one quarter. So one quarter. On one ninth, two ninths. And well, this is already taken, but on this interval you can use the same spiel. So seven ninths, eight ninths. And here, because we want the function to be sort of non-decreasing, define it to be three quarters here. So three quarters on seven ninths, eight ninths. And then you can just continue. For this interval, split it up into two pieces and define your function to be one eighth. And then here, also split it up into two pieces. Define your function to be 3 eighths. Also, while this is taken, here, split it up into three pieces. Define it to be 5 eighths. And finally here, split it up into three pieces and define it to be 7 eighths. So it's 1 eighth on, if you want the interval, 1 over 27. 2 over 27, then 3 eighths on the second, next interval, 5 eighths, and then uh, 7 eighths. And so if you continue this process, you get this weird thing, you know, this, what's called the devil staircase, which is a function that just, it's like the devil is happy, you know, it makes you go up stairs that are like infinitely high, right? So you go up infinitely many steps. And in general, on the interval, one over three to the n, two over three to the n, that becomes a one over two to the n, etc., etc. So then you get the next one is three over two to the n, da, 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 up to two to the n minus one, over 2 to the n, sorry, no, uh, 2 to the n minus 1, I believe. Yeah, 2 to the n minus 1 over 2 to the n on the very last piece. So that's a technical definition, but, you know, uh, we get this very artistic picture. And the question is, once you have this graph, what is the integral? So question for today, what is 
integral 0 to 1 of f of x dx. In other words, what is a let me use a green function, ah, a green colors. If you look at the area below this graph, what is this area? Okay. And well, <laughs> good luck doing that with the Riemann integral. I'm not even sure if it's integrable in the Riemann sense, but using Lebesgue integrals is actually much, much easier to do. Because remember how you build up Lebesgue integrals? You just start with those simple functions, which are like indicator functions, and you just take a limit of indicator functions. And this is perfect because we actually have, even though this graph is very weird, it's actually an infinite sum of indicator functions. That's why it's very prone to Lebesgue integration. And before I forget, this function is also known for something else. Because notice that every step, the derivative is zero. So this is a function for which the derivative is zero almost everywhere. But you see this function is definitely not constant. So that's an analysis. We like this function. Okay. F is a limit of simple functions. Namely, f equals to the limit as n goes to infinity of fn, where exactly what I said, you build the functions in steps, namely f of 1, you start by saying it, 1 half times the indicator function of 1 third, 2 thirds. In other words, just as I said, this is the interval 0, 1, and you take the first third, the middle third, and you define the value here to be 1 half. Then, in fact, it was the first step in our construction, and if you like, this is your f of 1, so f1. And then, we can just build up, you know, our... our function here. F1, so it's still 1 half times the indicator function of 1 third, 2 thirds. But now you add this 1 quarter, 3 quarters, right? So 1 quarter times the indicator function of 1 ninth, 2 ninth, plus 3 quarters times the indicator function of 7 ninth, 8 ninth. So it looks, again, something like that. You have the interval 0, 1. You take the first third, 1 third, 2 thirds. You define it to be 1 half here. And then on the middle third here, you let it be 1 quarter. And then here, you let it be 3 quarters. So that's your f2. And you'll see, if you continue this process, you actually find that, you know, you do obtain the devil staircase, fun scare staircase function. And why is that nice? Remember, one of the steps of Lübeck integral equation says that the integral of f is really just a limit of the integrals of this fn. And, you know, or you can justify this with the dominated convergence theorem because those functions are always less than 1, at least on the interval 0, 1. OK, so what, what I said by definition of the Lebesgue integral, integral of f is by definition the limit of the integrals of fn. OK, but now let's just calculate the integrals. But what is the integral of f1? Remember, it's the integral of 1 half times the indicator function of 1 thirds, 2 thirds. And that's 1 third times 2 thirds minus 1 third. Sorry, 1 half times 2 thirds minus 1 third, which is 1 half times 1 third. 
And I don't simplify it like that because we want to find a pattern. So f2 would be, in this case, integral of, again, one half times indicator function of one third, two thirds, plus one quarter times the integral indicator function of one ninth, two ninths, plus three quarter times the indicator function of uh, seven ninths, eight ninths. And that equals to one half times one third plus one quarter times one ninth plus three quarters times one ninth. Because for the first interval, the length is one third. The second one, the length is one ninth. But in fact, just for the next step, let's group the intervals by the order. And what I mean is here, things is in terms of three. So let's group all the things with three. Here, the level, if you want, is nine. So let's factor out nine from everything. So it's still one half times one third plus, in this case, here the functions is a quarter. So one quarter times one ninth. So this is the value because we have value one over four, three over four. And this is the length of the interval, one ninth. And then we just have one plus three. And again, I will not you know, evaluate this, but if you follow this pattern, and I think by the definition then, use the definition of f, of fn, we can show the following. Integral of fn is, again, one half times one third, times one, right, value is one, and then plus one quarter times one ninth times one plus three. And then just follow this pattern, then the next step is, the intervals is one over three to the n, or I guess three cubed, so one over 27. The value then becomes one over eight, you know, three over eights, five over eights, seven over eights. So it's really one over two to the third power times one plus three plus five plus seven. And then if you look at the pattern, the last thing then becomes one over two to the n times one over three to the n times one plus three plus five plus seven up to the last term if you remember the definition, is 2 to the n minus 1 over 3 to the n. And now let's try to simplify this gibberish. So this is our answer in terms of n. Let's try to simplify that. Well, what happens if you sum up 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus dot 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 plus? 2L minus 1, well, it really becomes, uh, you know, I guess uh, 2 times 1 minus 1 plus 2 times 2 minus 1 plus dot 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 plus 2 times L minus 1. And that's, if you write it in sigma notation, it's sum from 1 up to L of 2L minus 1. Sorry, sum from 1 to L of 2i minus 1, and that becomes 2 times sum from i to L of i minus, so if you want, so sum of i from 1 to L of 1, and then there's a nice fact that you should know, if this becomes 2 times L times L plus 1 over 2, and that just becomes L. And so you have L squared plus L minus L. And that's L, like the magazine. L squared, sorry. The magazine. Okay. 
Therefore, all this junk here can actually be simplified much, much more nicely. Because then we have the following, integral of fn then becomes, we still have 1 half times 1 third times 1 plus 1 quarter times 1 nine times. So 1 plus 3, here L equals to 2, 2? L equals to 2, so we have 2 squared. And then if you have here L equals to 3, no, um, 2 times 3, no, L equals to 4 here, so we have uh, two, 4 squared plus, if you want, uh, 1 over 8 times 1 over 27 times. 4 squared, but, and just to make stuff easier later on, 4, let's write it as 2 to the 2. So if you want the 2 to the 4, really. And then you just continue, and you're left with 1 over 2 to the n, 1 over 3 to the n. And well, what does that correspond to? That's really 2 times 2 to the n minus 1 minus 1. So L is 2 to the n minus 1. So what this becomes is 2 to the n minus 1 squared. Yes. Which here becomes 2 to the 2n minus 2. Let me erase that gibberish now. To make this an even more suggestive, let's do that. So this is 1 over 2 to the 1, 1 over 3 to the 1. And then this you can write 1 is 2 to the 2 times 1 minus 2 plus 1 over 2 squared, 1 over 3 squared, 2 times. Because we want to write this in this form, right? 2 times 2 minus 2 plus 1 over 2 third, third, third power, 1 over 3 cubed, 2 times 2 times 3 minus 2. Okay. And then hopefully now you see the pattern. So it's 1 over 2 to the n, 1 over 3 to the n, 2 to the 2n two minus 2. So now we can write the integral as a sum in sigma notation. The sum from k equals to 1, okay, to n of 1 over 2 to the k, 1 over 3 to the k, 2 to the 2k minus 2. Now, we can simplify this a little bit. And by the way, that's why I didn't write 1 over 6 to the k k equals to 1 to n of 1 over 3 to the k, 2 to the 2k minus 2 minus k. Okay, and that equals to sum from k equals to 1 to n of 1 over 3 to the k, 2 to the k minus 2. Let's hope there's no dk here, okay? And then this 2 to the minus 2, we can pull it outside. So it's one fourth sum from k equals to one to n of two to the k over three to the k. That's two thirds to the k. And remember what is this gibberish? It's the integral of fn. Integral of fn, dx, I guess from zero to one, equals to one fourth sum from k equals to one to n of two-thirds k. All right, and now what, you know, we'll actually reach our final answer. What is the integral from zero to one of f? Well, it's by what I said, it's the limit as n goes to infinity of this junk, integral from zero to one of fn of x dx.
which becomes, in this case, simply the sum from k to 1 to infinity of 2 thirds k. But this just becomes a geometric series, so almost, because this is 1 fourth times 2 thirds plus 2 thirds squared plus da da da. And therefore, just factor out at 2 thirds. So 1 fourth times 2 thirds times 1 over 1 minus 2 thirds. And that becomes, if you want, uh, 1 sixth, if you want, 1 sixth times 1 over 1 third. And that becomes 1 half. Ta-da! So, again, challenge for you, try to do it with the Riemann integral, which is, I think, a bit harder, but using the Lebesgue integral, it's so elegant enough that we can just say that the integral of f is just the limit of the simple functions. One little thing, though, there is an oh my god way of doing this, and let me quickly present this to you. It turns out, if you look at the definition of f, you get that f of 1 minus x is in fact equal to 1 minus f of x. So in case you're wondering what kinds of functions satisfy this, well, then now integrate, integral from 0 to 1 of f of 1 minus x dx becomes, if you want, integral of 1 over that interval, which is 1 minus integral of f of x dx. But now, by a change of variables, if you let u be 1 minus x, you can show that it's the same as integral from 0 to 1 of f of x dx. And so this is 1 minus integral from 0 to 1 f of x dx. And so, you literally get an equation for this unknown, and if you solve for it, you got the interval from 0 to 1, f of x dx equals to 1 half. Whoa! Okay. It's nice, but it doesn't illustrate the Lebesgue integral much, you know, but this is nicer, I think. <laughs> All right, so if you like this, you know, Lebesgue integral voyage, okay, <laughs> then if you want to explore more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.